I usually have to turn the volume up quite loud so you can hear me. Um, all my family complains when I call them. They say, I can't hear you. One time I'd been out cutting up some wood for, we had we heated our house with wood for many years. I was cutting some up and I, my sister called, so I just went in and talked to her on the phone and forgetting I had my earplugs in. She said, what'd you do different? I can hear you. So while you're turning to Ephesians chapter 4, I got baptized when I was 18 at Kansas City Baptist Temple. But I got saved at Youth for Christ when I was 15. So I went a number of years because they didn't have a church association. I didn't grow for three years. And when I finally was baptized, I started to grow. Of course, Kansas City Baptist Temple at that time was running about 1,200 people. So Monday night was their visitation night. So I got baptized on a Sunday night, and they said, you come to visitation. I said, what's that? They said, we have dinner at 6 o'clock at the church every Monday, and then we go out and talk to people. So I did. And then after that, they said, you're going to be here Wednesday. I said, what's Wednesday? They said, that's midweek service. So I was there Wednesday. So that started my life as a Christian. Just doors were open, I was there. It just seemed the thing to do. The Lord has been blessed us ever since. In Ephesians 4, verse 7 and 8 says, getting this back, a little bit of kickback. But unto everyone is given a grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. So we're going to talk about some of these gifts the Lord gave us. So I want to start with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your day, for your goodness. We pray now you'll direct my thoughts. We have a clear mind and that they'll learn from your word tonight. In Christ's name, amen. As almost everyone knows the first gift is the gift of salvation. We find that in Romans 6, 23. Turn there. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For how many years, Mom, we worked with junior high kids? We've been to camp for 30 plus years. I learned that with young kids, when you lead them to the Lord, you need to explain to them a gift is something unique. If you, you can't steal a gift, it's no longer a gift. You can't buy a gift for yourself unless someone gave you the money to buy a gift. You can't borrow a gift. You can't actually even, you can make a gift for someone else, but you can't make a gift for yourself. It's unique. It's something that only someone else can give you. This gift he gives to us is eternal life. That's the first gift God gives. But then it goes on down in Matthew 25. Verses 14 and 15, it lists some. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods, and then to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Everybody has at least one gift. Some people have two or three. Some may have as many as five. My wife's gift is teaching. My gift is helps. I enjoy, really enjoy helping someone do something. 
was working in the house, working on a car. <coughs> I enjoy helping others. That's my gift. I've learned some others along the way. So in 1 Corinthians, we'll take a little closer look. Verse 12, or chapter 12, I'm sorry. Verses 27 and 28. It says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversity of tongues. Now the next chapter over, verse 8 and 13 reads, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. So we know that some of the things they wrote, they had a special dispensation. They could do miracles that we can't do. They could heal people that we can't. They could speak in tongues of other foreign languages, which we can't, without being taught. But the other gifts, the other gifts we can have and apply. So the first one here says apostles, then prophets. We know an apostle, I have a Greek English New Testament. So I looked up in the Greek the word apostle, apostle and it translates to ambassador, he that is sent. We call them missionaries now. That's what the apostles were. They were missionaries. So we still have those today. The word prophet also translates inspired speaker. I've known some pastors, I've known some evangelists that I believe were really inspired by God. I knew one older man he could put more across in 15 minutes than most pastors could in an hour. He was just fantastic. Kept your attention, got his point across, you learned from him. He was an inspired speaker. Next, teachers, it's a gift to be able to teach. Then helps, which I say is my gift. I had to learn moderation. At first, I enjoyed it so much that I had needed something at home to fix and I was in somebody else's house fixing their problem. Doesn't sit real well with the wife. So I had to learn moderation. Then it says government. That translates directorship in the church. We call them pastors. Pastor may not be a great speaker, but he has a job to be the director over the church. That's his job. That's a that's a gift from the Lord. I could never be a pastor. I don't have that gift. And in Romans 12, we get two more. Verse 8 talks about he that hath exhortation. Let him do it with simplicity. He that rules with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So what's exhortation? I translate as either comfort or consoling. Mercy can place to have compassion. The question is, how many gifts do you have? Those last two, all of us can learn to do. You can learn to have and use. If you don't have it, then ask the Lord for it. He said, ask. See, more importantly, it's not how many gifts you have, but which ones do you use? So I said, I enjoy doing my, using my gift my wife's taught for <laughs> how many years? <laughs> Too long. <laughs> Still using that gift. 
When a lost person comes in, they need compassion, not judgment. Judgment's the Holy Spirit's job. It's not our job to judge people. And he does such a much better job of it. He'll judge and convict. Our job is to love them. Show that compassion. And if possible, comfort. When I was first saved, I was the only one in my family that knew the Lord. Then later, my oldest sister got saved, her and her husband, but the rest of them didn't. My mom, a week or two before she died, she accepted the Lord as Savior. We had a ladies, or what we call it, ladies retreat or the banquet. The banquet we had every year, that was every other year. The dinner, mother, the mother-daughter banquet was every year. So I, we were able to get my mom every year up for that, for 30 years in a row. But she never would accept the Lord. Our preacher's wife would send her letters with a track in it, and it would seem like water off a duck's back. And about a week before she died, she accepted the Lord. My dad never did. My, I've got three older sisters. The middle one, you couldn't talk to her. No matter what, she would not let you talk to her. Of course, that was her whole life. She knew everything. Everybody else was stupid. You know that kind of people? There's, they're out there, right? Nobody can advise them. She came down with cancer. Her daughters and her husband all quit smoking. She didn't. Of course, she was the first one of the kids to die. Reap what you sow. So the question is, we have a need here now for some teachers. When we left St. Joe to come here, the Lord had lined up some young couples to take our place. We worked in junior church. We worked camp. We back up for super class, which is with um, special ed people, and at times backed up on the bus route if needed. And the Lord had prepared other people to take our place. In June, we're leaving, so we're praying for some people to step up because there's a need. That's why I'm bringing this. You need to learn to use your gift. The Lord will bless you. I really enjoy helping others. My wife enjoys teaching. Our pastor loves to preach. So the question is, what are you going to pray for? Pray for the Lord to work in your life. Pray for the Lord to use you. Ask him for others to step up. There's a lot of lost people in Eau Claire. We've got a bus route again, which is great. Our other church, we had four bus routes. We'd have at least 100 kids every Sunday morning. And working with 100 kids at junior church from buses, a lot of them don't know how to act. They're half wild. They come in half dressed. They come in hungry. With those kids, you can reach. <laughs> Show them love. They respond. A lot of them don't get it at home. That's true here, same as it was there. I, I enjoy working with that-age kids. They're so needful. And they want to be loved. When you love them, you can reach them and the Lord can change their lives. That's why we've done camp for 30 plus years. I'm in my 70s and I still want to go to camp work with the kids. So enjoy it. 
So we have a few prayer requests here. Barb Willenek. So that's a